Hollywood directors, fellow actors, even some of her fans have often referred to Martell as a chameleon because of her unique appearance and her proficiency in depicting several accents, which enabled her to portray characters of wide ranges and ethnicities and races. You may know her as Tpring in Star Trek, but I bet there is a whole lot you don't know about her. So let's dive into it, shall we? Here are 10 little known facts about Arlene Martell. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below saying, I subscribe. We're gonna do our best to personally reply to your comment. First things first, Arlene's background. On April 14th, 1936, a star was born in the Bronx. Arlene Martel was originally Arlene Greta Sachs, born to her parents who were Jewish Austrian immigrants. Arlene spent most of her childhood in one of the poorest slums in the Bronx. Her parents couldn't afford to give her quality education, and their condition was only getting worse as time passed. Just when they were about to give up on the possibility of Arlene ever becoming successful in America, Arlene's mother's boss felt empathy towards them and decided to personally underwrite her attendance at an upper-crust boarding school in Connecticut. Martell found her love for acting at a young age, and this was what fueled her decision to audition for New York's famed High School of Performing Arts. Not only was she admitted, but she did exceedingly well. Arlene knew where she was coming from and the rare opportunity she's gotten to have a good education, so she decided to work as hard as she could. She later graduated in 1953 with the School Top Drama Award, an evidence of her diligence. Naturally, studying method acting was the next step she took, and she worked hard till she gained her seat at the table as a member of the actor's studio. Arlene made all the right decisions that would undoubtedly propel her to the big screens one day. She loved acting so much she was willing to spend the rest of her life doing what she loved the most, Arlene's appearances and movie roles. So just like every other person destined for greatness, Arlene had to do a lot of work behind the scenes. Before her career in acting took off, two of the most notable roles Martell took was in the TV series Twilight Zone. One of her appearances in the series, she played a woman in the bar in the episode What You Need. The second appearance was on the episode 22, where she played a nurse known for repeatedly saying the words, room for one more, honey, both at the entrance to a hospital morgue and at the door of a doomed airplane. She performed well in these roles, which led to more career-changing roles in movies like Star Trek as Spock's Vulcan bride, Tepring. Martell said in a 2003 interview, she had no idea the small part would be remembered so fondly by her viewers. Fan purchased my Star Trek photos at conventions where I signed autographs. I had no idea that Tpring would be so memorable to people, she said. Her dedication had given her a big break that she didn't even expect. Sometimes breakthroughs come at the most unlikely times. She even appeared in popular TV shows like Mission Impossible, The Man from Uncle, and The Untouchables. Her ability to take on several roles effortlessly kept her coming back on screens. She could be an innocent mother today and a ruthless terrorist tomorrow. She showed her incredible acting range when she starred in the movie Bewitched as Malvina the Witch. Her talent was rare, but just like every other person, she had that one area of her life that just wasn't working out. Her married life. Married and divorced three times. Arlene Martell was married to three different men at three different times, and later divorced from all three of them. Her first husband was Robert Palmer. Their union birthed a son, Adam Palmer. Her second marriage was to an actor by the name of Jerry Douglas. That union birthed three children, and her third marriage was to Matthew Schoen. Something about her not giving up on the possibility of love and a happy family showed how resilient she was. She may have lost three men, but she had her beautiful children as proof that love really existed. Maybe marriage was just not for her. Martell's Failed Productions In the later years of her life, she began to nurse a desire to create her own movie. She took a leap of faith by writing her own movie called Whisper Into My Good Ear. She wrote it for displaced people in society who found themselves in career paths that they didn't want to be in, doing the things that they didn't enjoy doing. It was supposed to be a love letter to these kinds of people, one that would give them hope for a better tomorrow. It was based on William Hanley's work in his one-act play, which had the same title. It was so good that Maximilian Schell, and Louis Fletcher. Some of the iconic actors at the time 
expressed their interest in being a part of the project. She also revealed that the director of Star Trek, Robert Wise, wanted to direct the movie. It seemed like everything was in place, but for some reason, Martell decided to leave that work on hold and write another screenplay called Mrs. Dally as a Lover. The work was also based on William Hanley's work, and surprisingly, none of these screenplays was produced or saw the light of day. Martell loved Star Trek. So most people don't realize that Arlene Martell was a regular at Star Trek conventions worldwide from 72 to 2014. Now perhaps it was because she had appeared in a Star Trek episode, but she was known to be a huge Star Trek fan, and she did her best to appear at Star Trek conventions till her health began to decline. In an interview, she was asked if she knew any younger actresses who would play her role as Tebring in the second season of Star Trek, and she excitedly volunteered to do it. The excitement in her eyes revealed how much she loved acting, especially as a Star Trek character. Age did a number on her, but her heart still yearned for her passion. Leaving an inheritance for her generation, net worth. Arlene was determined to not allow her children to go through the same poverty-stricken experience she went through while growing up. She knew that they would never have to fight for scraps like she did. Before her eventual death, Arlene Martell had obviously done very well for herself through her career because she's worth about $5 million, worked independently, and had no agent. In the creative agency, anyone would agree that you need an agent to get to where you want to be, an agent that recognizes your talent and has the kind of connections, experience, and drive to be able to get you into doors that you'd otherwise not be able to enter. Well, Martell was not so lucky. Now, this is one of the littlest known facts about Martell and her acting career. Most actors and actresses then and now have always been known to have an agent who gets them movie roles and helps them to get through, but Martell was not one of those. She had been quoted on multiple occasions saying, I don't have a good agent who will get me the plum roles. Now, apparently, most of her roles were gotten by word of mouth and referrals and not through talent agents. Diversity and range in accents and dialogues. Martell was often called a chameleon because, for one, her looks allowed her to play multiple roles as it did not traditionally conform to a single race or nationality. Also, and most notable, was her ability to speak up the different accents and dialogues almost as perfectly as if they were hers to begin with. This was her selling point in the industry and one of her most distinct talents. Battle with Breast Cancer Martell proved herself to be a true warrior. The last five years of her life were the most difficult as she battled breast cancer. She later died in 2014 from heart bypass surgery complications at a hospital in Santa Monica, California at 78. So which of these facts got your interest the most? Let us know in the comments section below. Hey, check out the next video in this series as well.